for your mouth. Let me know if you need a bigger piece. But they do. I'm very fat. But how is the statement wrong? For me it is and has been that simple. 20 pounds down. Good luck on whatever journey you're on. So others' opinions don't matter? Plus Size Travel Struggles 2024 Still can't fit in the plane lavatory comfortably? Still can't walk down the aisles comfortably? Still can't use the tray tables? Still can't go through security without getting an extra pat down. Still can't fly without asking for a seatbelt extender. Still can't find plus size clothing in stores or souvenir shops. Still can't enjoy the pool if it's not accessible to us. Have you changed something about your lifestyle to expect this? Bet that extra slice of cake ain't worth it now. Extra slice or 600 extra slices. Oh no. If only there was a simple, obvious solution to this problem. This didn't go as she'd hoped. You know what I just realized? I spent like a huge part of my life just walking through life hoping that nobody would like pick up on that I was fat or that nobody would mention it or nobody would bully me for it. I curated my whole life to avoid that bullying. Like, I never told anybody who I had a crush on. I was always very careful to make sure everybody knew I was eating healthy and exercising. I did a lot of things so that nobody would make fun of me and bully me. And then I decided to come on here and start making content ab about this. And I, I have willingly taken on the bullying that I spent the first... 21 years of my life like trying to avoid like doing nothing but trying to avoid and instead I have willingly taken that on and I get terrible comments every day and I get trolls telling me you know all these awful things calling me all the names that I was never called by the grace of God in elementary school because people were pretty fucking nice and i got lucky and again i did a lot of things to avoid that bullying including starve myself and now here i am fat on the internet getting all these horrible comments and i gotta be so honest i wouldn't trade it for anything i would not go back because now i'm not living in fear i'm not constantly worrying and wondering what could happen what someone could say about me no it's all happened already i've tackled my fear of that and in exchange i've built a beautiful community of people who i love talking with and listening to and sharing with and it's been incredible and i feel so much better now than when i was younger and just living my life to avoid the bullying that i now willingly receive on a day-to-day -day basis but it is worth it for my community and for my peace of mind and that's fucking growth babes <laughs> today's eye-opening discussion is on a topic that's often overlooked the profound impact of obesity on the brain Beyond the physical consequences, obesity can cast a long shadow over our mental well-being. If you don't feel like you owe health to your family and children, then you are a horrible parent. Fact. I've been thinking about this a lot. What makes someone a good parent? Tomorrow, my oldest son turns 18, and I honestly can't believe it. I had him when I was 20 years old no relationship with his biological father, truly doing it on my own. And meanwhile, wanting to become who I literally am today. I dreamt of being a plus size model, of living in LA, of doing all of these things. I never really dreamt of being a mom. And I feel really lucky that I was able to be a mom in really, really chaotic, unplanned circumstances. And I feel really grateful that I've kept a human being alive for 18 years. And not only that, he is incredibly bright and so empathetic and so sweet. 
and we're so much alike. <laughs> it's been a really good reminder to myself that I did this. You know, we did this. I don't know what makes someone a bad parent, but I know I'm not a bad parent. And I know that my son doesn't see me, my older son and my younger son, they don't see me as a failure because of my body size. If anything, they just see their mom. They see someone who is loving them, who shows up for them, who takes them to school, who picks them up, who watches all kinds of shows over and over that I don't really want to watch, but I watch it with them, who does all of the things that no one really like wants to do in parenting, but you do it because you love your kids and you hope to give them something better than you had. And for those of us that didn't plan on being parents and didn't plan on being single parents at that, I think that I'm doing pretty good. And I know that my sons are proud of me and that's all I really care about. Um, so yeah. You managed to make your response all about you. You are a good human. He is a good human. That's all that matters. We need more good humans. When we carry excess weight, our body's hormonal balance is thrown out of whack. Fat cells, particularly those deep within our abdomen, churn out inflammatory substances that can penetrate the blood-brain barrier, affecting brain function. What if I was always told that my body and soul were in harmony? What if I was told to respect that vessel for carrying me through the world, and my vessel was worthy of that respect at a size 28 and a size 12? Wrong definition of respect. What if instead of seeing magazines question why a postpartum celeb would dare step foot in public without removing the evidence that their body once carried life, I saw magazines celebrate the wonder that is childbirth and the marks bodies are left with in remembrance of this feat? What if we saw people of all sizes on our screens in film, TV, music and dance as success and talent exist at every weight? And what if the conversations in workplaces didn't revolve around eating too much over the holidays or you want to avoid Jenny's death today? She has cakes and I can't indulge. I'm saving my sins. What if we just didn't talk about diets or weight loss at all? What if my body wasn't a problem that needed to be solved? What if we were just allowed to exist in peace? Studies have shown that obese individuals are at a higher risk of developing dementia and cognitive decline later in life. The excess fat can lead to structural changes in the brain, impairing memory, decision-making, and overall cognitive function. 